we're sending you back to the future. In 1985, the 80s were in full swing. More importantly, highly evolved gaming classics were coming out onto the IBM PC as the popularity of the PC became inevitable. The attack of the PC clones were trousing down your local computer store and the flashy new EGA 16 color standard had been announced. So without further ado, let's rock the place like it's Live Aid, let's drink a new Coke like it's going out of fashion, and strap yourself in to your DeLorean, because when these PC games hit 85, you're gonna see some serious sh**. Starting us off then at number 10 is Silly Master Blaster Pinball. It's a simple but playable pinball game, and it looks pretty much how it is. You use the shift keys to flip the flappers, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. The control keys are nice and simple, and it has some reasonably good sound, and the graphics obviously for 1985 were evolving out of the four-color CGA, but this one, unfortunately, is still well and truly in the depths of the CGA mark. 1985 for the PC was a year of quite a lot of sports games and also simulations, as you'll see within the rest of this top 10. This game here is called Tournament Tennis. It's not too hard to play, at, well at least at novice level, which is what I was doing, because really I suck at any, any sport actually, I don't have any coordination whatsoever. But anyway, I found this enjoyable, and if I can find this game enjoyable, then I bet you can, because I'm sure you've got more coordination than my good self. It's, uh, it's nice and responsive, the controls, the uh, collision detection works um, for a game of this vintage, that's quite unusual. And yeah, it's a great little tennis game. Definitely give this one a shot if you like sports games. So this one's going to be controversial. In at number 8 on the top 10 of 1985 is none other than Ultima 3 and also a hat tip Ultima 4 and The Bard's Tale. Although Ultima 4 was released in 1985 on the Apple II, it wasn't released till around 1987 for the PC. Both The Bard's Tale and Ultima series were the best-selling RPGs of the 1980s, with The Bard's Tale being the biggest one of the two. Now, the thing is, this is controversial because, well, I just never got into RPGs, and specifically, I never got into the Ultimas. I just couldn't be bothered. All the oldie yildy just didn't appeal to me. Of course, that is rubbing the wrong way with a lot of people because I know that many of you out there are huge big fans of this genre and also at the time are the Ultima games. So here you are, it's at number eight for you guys. In at number seven is Bruce Lee. Now here's a little bit of a ratum for you because this was actually released in 1984, although it was end of the year, so I managed to miss it from last week's review. So apologies if you're expecting that in 1984. I do find this game a little bit of a precursor to Karateka, which came out later by Jordan Mechner. I know the graphics here on a CGA display look horrific, but if you had a PC Junior or a composite output, the colours looked an awful lot better than the version that you see here, which most people, I guess, would have seen. The game was actually pretty good. Um, I didn't like the fact that the baddies kept respawning. Uh, it's the same two baddies. It's a ninja on a, and a yamo, which is kind of like a sumo wrestler. But they just keep on re reappearing every single time they would die. So in the game you are the late great Bruce Lee and you've got to go around this wizard's tower which uh, has chambers all over the place. Each chamber has these little lanterns on it suspended from various areas. What you need to do is go pick up those lanterns and that will give you some sort of exit path down into the next level or next chamber. To stop it being mundane and smash and grab, there are lots of little hazards like mines and moving walls all over the place. Definitely makes the adventure much more fun. The game even allowed a multiplayer mode so that your friend could play on the other side of the keyboard and play one of the baddies. Great fun. Absolutely, if you haven't played it yet, definitely do play it. Once you get to the grips of it, it's a really inviting game. Not so hot on the heels of Epix's summer games was, of course, winter games. 
This game wasn't given enough credit. Because Summer Games was such a hit, I think that some people thought it was the uh, poor little brother. But I thought it's still a great game and certainly good enough to feature here. Unfortunately, Summer Games never did hit the PC. There are plenty of countries to choose from. USA, France, USSR, Canada, Mexico, Spain, Netherlands, Norway, West Germany, Austria, Italy, Denmark, Ireland, Brazil and Japan, as well as Australia. Sadly, there's no New Zealand, which is where I live these days, but there is, of course, the United Kingdom, which is where I'm originally from. So, yes, we get a rendition of God Save the Queen from our PC speaker. Bless. The events that you can compete in are Hot Dog, I've actually never heard of Hot Dog, Biathlon, Speed Skating, Figure Skating, Ski Jump, Free Skating and Bobsled. The skating ones are a bit of a rip-off mainly because they're all kind of the same scenery, but certainly the uh, Ski Jump and the Biathlon and the Hot Dog are all quite good fun. I was rubbish at Bobsled. But anyway, a great fun game, definitely check it out, it's going to stay in my keep pile. One of the first games to be using the EGA Enhanced Graphics Adapter was Silent Service, another simulation game in that year. Plenty of those in this year. Anyway, um, this game is a submarine simulation and it is very, very accurate for its time. The graphics were really good and um, I certainly enjoyed playing this, although the keys are an absolute nightmare. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Here's a copy of the manual. Now, you have to pretty much have the manual for this in order to play it. All those keys you just can't get anywhere without it. But once you see past all of that, there's an awful lot you can do. It. There's plenty of different scenarios you can play. It's all based in the Second World War. You are a member of the Silent Service, which is the US Navy Submarine Command, and you have to go around the Pacific to find those Japanese. You can go on extended patrols of up to two months from Hawaii, Australia or New Zealand, and you can set your difficulty level and time period Period, as well as your realism. The graphics are good, the gameplay is realistic. What's not to like about this game? And that's why it's got the number 5 spot. In at number 4 is Solo Flight, another Sid Meier classic. It's a real-time flight trainer sim with objectives similar to those flown by the US Air Forces since 1962. It's a historical simulation called Mail Pilot, where you hop from airfield to airfield dropping off mail. It's based on a 1930s monoplane. Uh, you can get all sorts of different scenarios, dangerous and bad weather, low light, and despite its horrible palette of CGA, which we guess we couldn't get away from up till about this time, it's still realistic enough to make you want for some more. It's a great little simulator, I thoroughly enjoyed playing it, you definitely need to have the manual to make it playable again, it's like a lot of the simulators at the time, you certainly needed to have that manual. The next one up is an educational game. Now before you start going, oh no, this one here is something that I asked on Facebook if they remember their favourite game of 1985 and many people did come back and say this one. Bear in mind that this game obviously came out when a lot of people around this particular era were growing up. However, I've checked this game out, I've played it a number of times back in the day and also just now on this review and I can tell you it was just as much fun then as it is now. Carmen Sandiego is a master thief who leads a criminal organisation VILE or V-I-L-E. This organisation specialises in stealing the world's treasures without a trace. The detective agency which you are a part of makes it their personal mission to foil Carmen Sandiego's plans. The criminals in Vile, of course, are jet setters all over the world, in fact. So it's your job to hunt these baddies down and get back the loot that they have stolen. And of course, to do that, you need to find out where they have gone. And the way you do that is to gather clues about their identity and also who they've spoken to. So, for example, you may go into a museum or an airport or a hotel and find out if the particular suspect has entered those places. And usually the person, if they have seen them, will offer a clue of what they were doing next. 
and then you just get on a plane and you hop yourself to your next location and hope that you can find them there. Other Carmen Sandiego games came after this one, but this one was the original and it is still a lot of fun for all the family. And at number two then is Striker. You play this helicopter here and the great thing about this is its dynamism. The landscapes change, they're totally random every time. The enemies, all five of them, change placements all the time. The only thing that doesn't change is the amount of levels. There are only five of them. The first one is pick up spies. The second one, drop off spies. Third, pick up cargo rescue stranded people and destroy missile factory and that's really the main disappointing aspect about this game there just isn't enough of it but it is well thought out the chopper is very easy to move around you can shoot bombs you can use your guns all whilst trying to evade all the baddies another dynamic of the game of course is that you can run out of fuel it is possible to refuel but you've got to be careful on how you actually hit that fueling target Striker is addictive gameplay at its best from this early era of PC games. It's unique and it's great fun that until you play all five levels will keep you coming back for more and more. Great game. Well, what can I say about King's Quest? This was the beginning of an era. Now Sierra Online had made games for the IBM PC and also for the Apple II for a number of years, but this one was really big because it was the one that launched the AGI or Adventure Game Interpreter. IBM had commissioned Sierra to make a really colorful looking game for their upcoming IBM PC Junior. King's Quest was released in 1984, so a little bit of a ratum here, however it didn't quite seep in through to the PC proper until between 1985 and 1987. This version here is the EGA version which was released around 86-87. And then the year after in 1986, King's Quest 2, which is my all time favourite of the King's Quest series came out. To me, these adventure games were far more engaging than the Infocom text adventures because they had graphics and they were also much more fun than the RPGs, at least for me anyway. In King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown, the young knight Sir Graham is sent by the dying King Edward on a quest to destroy the wicked witch Dahlia and find three treasures in order to become the new king. All in all, there were eight King's Quests in the whole series parts 1 and parts 2 were my favourites. But King's Quest was pivotal because this was the very beginning of the AGI games and the very beginning of the colourful adventure games that spawned a whole generation of Sierra Online games. Titles such as Space Quest, Quest for Glory, Police Quest and of course Leisure Suit Larry all started right here. If you haven't played King's Quest, do it and do it now. Well, there you have it, my top 10 games of 1985. And as you can see, a lot of them were looking a bit more reasonable. The gameplay was more involved. There was no Space Invaders anymore, as far as I could tell. Simulations, adventure games, fast action. It was clear that the IBM PC was around to stay and that many people would start developing games from now on. The future was bright. Well, what do you think? Do you agree with my choices in the games of 1985 or have I been horrendously critical of the RPGs? Either way, I'd love to hear from you. Please drop a comment in below and of course if you like my stuff then please consider subscribing. I'm also on Patreon as well if you'd like to give me a hat tip. Either way, I hope you've enjoyed this review and I will be back next time for 1986. Till then, ta -ra.